One of the hardest concepts for students to master is the idea of equilibrium. Science in Motion has several equilibrium labs, but most of them have to do with more of a qualitative, did it happen or not, and less of a quantitative. So this is an activity that you could use with your kids that would actually give them numbers that show when you change something, when you add a reactant or you take away a reactant or you change the temperature, what effect does that have on equilibrium? So let's dive in. This is a very simple reaction. When you take clear phenolphthalein, it'll give off purple phenolphthalein and hydrogen ion. The double arrows indicate that it's reversible. So in an equilibrium state, we will have some clear phenolphthalein, some purple phenolphthalein, and some hydrogen ion. And the vernier tools allow us to measure the hydrogen ion and the purple phenolphthalein. When you watch this video, it'll give you a very clear indication of why you're measuring, what you're measuring, and what we would do with those numbers. What we're trying to get to is the law of mass action, the idea that it's the products over reactants. The pH is easy enough. We can actually find the concentration of the hydrogen ion by just doing an inverse log of the negative pH. So this becomes our K expression, the products over the reactants. And the way we find the purple phenolphthalein is we can measure the absorbance of light. And the way we find the clear phenolphthalein is we can know how much purple we started with, and then we can know how much purple is left. And by subtracting those two, we can get the idea of how much of the purple turned into clear. And you can see that here. Part two has you looking at what happens when you add hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, and you change the temperature. What effect is that going to have either on adding hydrogen ion or the sodium hydroxide takes away hydrogen ion? What effect does that have on the equilibrium concentrations? The setup of this is pretty cool. You pick the change that you want to do, you hit play, it goes dark, and then you just have to stop it when the circle around the light gets to be the exact color. And in this example, we're pretty darn close. We know at that point that 40% of the purple phenolphthalein is left. That means 60% of it got used up. So you can calculate the concentration of the purple phenolphthalein. You can calculate the concentration of the clear phenolphthalein and given the pH, you can also calculate the hydrogen ion. Once you collect that data, you can come in here and you can pick, here's my sodium hydroxide one, because when they add some, you get one pH and one purple, purple phenolphthalein, you'll enter those numbers here. As the video keeps going, they add some more, this time the pH changes some more. It goes dark and again you have to stop it when the colors are approximately the same. And this time 62% of it is left. So they'll take you through a couple different trials so that you can record the data. After you record those, they basically have you draw a graph of the pH versus purple phenolphthalein. And really what we're looking for is that K, the equilibrium constant, should remain about the same, no matter if you add chemical or take chemical away. And then if you change the temperature, which is one of the options up top, you should be able to see that K actually changes when you change the temperature. So get on there and give it a try. Again, don't worry about collecting all the data and stuff. It's more of a look at it, collect some data, see if you can kind of get the hang of how it works and we'll talk about it in the afternoon.